November 15, 1998 was a calm evening in Laurel, Montana. Little did anyone know that it would soon turn into a night of unimaginable horrors. At approximately 8.15 p.m., a passing motorist made a chilling discovery outside a local video store. He saw a young woman desperately trying to crawl out of the store. Just one look at her sent shivers down his spine, and he dialed 911. The woman was 18-year-old Miranda Fenner, who had been brutally stabbed multiple times in the head and neck, and her throat had also been slashed. Sadly, the young girl passed away, leaving just one question in everyone's mind. Who was the killer? This case, along with two others, remained unsolved and went cold for decades, until recent breakthroughs. The shocking answers that emerged defy expectations, unveiling a tale of deception and betrayal that had remained hidden for far too long. This is their story. Miranda was a vibrant teenager, bursting with hopes and dreams. At 18, Miranda was ready to spread her wings and seek independence just like any other teenager. So, it's no surprise that getting a job at the movie shop felt like a dream come true. She loved helping customers and chatting with regulars. The fact that the store was close to home made it even better. But little did Miranda know, her ordinary job would soon thrust her into a world of darkness. On the evening of November 15th, 1998, just past 8 p.m., the police department received a frantic call reporting an injured woman crawling out of the movie shop. Racing to the scene, police officers were met with a horrifying sight. Young Miranda lay in a pool of her own blood. She was instantly rushed to the hospital, but could not survive her injuries and passed away within two hours. Miranda Fenner's murder shattered the community, and despite interviewing over 700 people, the killer remained a mystery. The sad part is that the police could never find a motive, nor a suspect. As time passed, the case went cold, leaving the Fenner family waiting for over two decades. But nature has its ways to unveil the truth. After years of silence and uncertainty, a bizarre twist emerged in the case. In March 2017, the Yellowstone County Sheriff's Office made a breakthrough when they interviewed Zachary David O'Neill. O'Neill was initially questioned in connection with a separate crime. He had assaulted a woman a few years back. However, the investigators were in for a shocking revelation. During the interrogation, O'Neill confessed not only to that attack, but also to the murder of Miranda Fenner. He eventually pleaded guilty for his crimes in 2019. It took more than two decades for justice to finally prevail. However, it finally brought closure to the long-suffering Fenner family. Just like in this case, another tragic saga finally found closure after years of agonizing wait. In the quiet suburbs of Texas, 59-year-old corrections officer and devoted mother Rhonda Richardson lived a seemingly ordinary life. She had no known enemies and was loved by all. Little did she know that fate had a sinister plan for her. On May 21st, 2019, Rhonda left her home to find her beloved missing dog. Tragically, it was the last time anyone saw her alive. As minutes turned into eternity, Rhonda never came home, and it became obvious she'd gone missing. On May 22nd, the police department received a distressed 911 call. Deputies from the San Jacinto County Sheriff's Office in Texas combed through the thick trees of Sam Houston National Forest, but their search ended in heartbreak when Rhonda's lifeless body was found. The body was in bad shape, with multiple slashes and a scalpel lying nearby. Now here's where things start getting fishy. The suspicion almost instantly fell on Robert Dale Clary, Rhonda's neighbor. The reason was his criminal history as a registered sex offender. He even had previous convictions for indecency with a child and multiple DWI charges, but nothing seemed to link him to this murder at the time. For years, the murder of Rhonda Richardson remained a mystery, but then the investigations had a major breakthrough. It turned out that the 911 call was actually made by Jason, the nephew of Robert. What's more odd is that it was Robert who stumbled upon Rhonda's body first, 
but he didn't alert the authorities immediately. According to Jason, Robert had made inappropriate comments about Rhonda and seemed to be interested in her. However, Rhonda had not welcomed his advances. This was the exact moment when it clicked for the investigators. Things were finally making sense. Previously, images of Rhonda's lifeless body were also discovered on Robert's phone, which he was asked to delete. But guess what? He had downloaded those pictures again from the cloud, as if they were some kind of trophy. Witnesses like neighbor James Talbert added to the mounting suspicion, recounting threats made by Robert against Rhonda's dogs, and seeing her riding on Robert's ATV right before she vanished. As if that wasn't enough, cell phone records proved that Robert was at the scene of the crime when Rhonda was murdered, directly contradicting his claims. All this evidence screamed that Robert was the murderer. He was finally arrested on October 31st, 2022, and later indicted by a grand jury on January 20th, 2023. If you believe this is the lowest a human can stoop, think again, because the next case hits hard. It's a gut-wrenching tale that shakes one's faith in humanity. But before we move ahead, make sure to subscribe for more updates and breakthroughs in cases that have been haunting people for decades. On March 21st, 2002, around 3 p.m., 13-year-old Millie Dowler left school in Weybridge, Surrey. She'd planned to do some art with a friend before heading home. However, they finished early, so Millie caught a train with her friend to walton on Tam Station. But instead of getting off at her usual stop, Millie decided to go grab some food with her friend at a nearby coffee shop. She planned to walk home afterward. Millie called her dad around 4 p.m. to let him know she'd be home soon. But sadly, that would be the last time they spoke. When Millie didn't return home as expected, her parents grew worried and got the police involved. It was a parent's worst nightmare. Their child was missing. But despite numerous searches and investigations, there was no trace of Millie. No sign, no clues, and no leads. It seemed as if the search had reached a standstill. Sadly, the hopes to see Millie alive again shattered when after six agonizing months, mushroom pickers discovered badly decomposed remains in Yately Heath Woods. It was Millie. The poor soul had passed away, forgotten in a distant area. One can only imagine the horror she went through in her final hours. Her parents and the entire community were shook with horror. But who was the murderer? A year passed, but the killer was nowhere to be found. The police shifted their focus to the last place Millie was seen, Station Avenue. It was around this time in February 2003 when a girl named Marsha McDonald was fatally attacked near her home. Months later, another woman was run over by a car, which led police to investigate Levi Belfield. Levi had a habit of wandering around bus stops, preying on young women and girls. But when his advances were rejected, his stalking and harassment got worse. And guess what? He lived just 50 yards away from where Millie was last seen. The pieces of the puzzle were falling into place, but the full picture was horrifying. Levi's girlfriend confirmed to the police that on the day Millie was murdered, Levi was not at home. In fact, when he returned home, he was not even wearing the same clothes he left with. According to the police, Levi was lurking near Station Avenue that day, waiting for Millie. When he saw her walking alone, he grabbed her. At six foot one inch and 20 stone, he easily overpowered her and took her to his flat nearby. From there, he drove her to his mother's house, where he subjected her to horrific abuse, rape, and torture for 14 hours before ultimately strangling her to death. Finally, in 2010, eight long and painful years after her disappearance, Levi was charged with Millie Dowler's murder. He was found guilty and received a life sentence. Do you believe he got the karma he deserved? Share your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.